Welcome to worship at St. Paul today. It's the day that we call Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. This week is holy not because of the days being holy, but because God did the things this week that changed the whole course of our lives and, and won our salvation. So today, it's about how Jesus entered Jerusalem to be our Savior. This Thursday is going to be Maundy Thursday, about how Jesus gave us the Lord's Supper the night before he died. Good Friday is the day he died on the cross, and Easter Sunday is when he rose from the dead victorious. So today let's celebrate the fact that Jesus came to be our Savior in Jerusalem. Let's sing the opening hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Dear people of God, we are unworthy of God's goodness. Let us turn to him in repentance, confessing our sins and pleading for his forgiveness. So today we confess our sins looking especially at the ninth and the tenth commandments. Lord God Almighty, what you say in the ninth and tenth commandments is plain. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. You warn us that loving money and worldly things is a spiritual trap. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. You warn that strife among Christians often has its roots in disgraceful selfishness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When, when you ask, ask you, you do, do not receive, receive because you ask with wrong motives that, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So today, Lord, we confess the evil desires within our hearts. Sins of placing our happiness and hope in worldly possessions and things. Sins of selfish motives, selfish desires, and selfish actions. Sins of envying others, rather than being content with what you have given. 
sins of griping and complaining about everything that does not go our way. We ask you to forgive us, Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading from God's Word today is the account of Jesus coming to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. It's recorded in Matthew chapter 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of our Lord. The next hymn today is the hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. That word Hosanna means, please save us, and it's the cry not only of the people back then, but our cry to God to come and save us, be our Savior. Let's sing that hymn together.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you today, from God our Father and from Jesus our Savior too. Jesus went to Jerusalem. Now, that's a very simple thing to say, but that really shocked a lot of people back at the time of Jesus. People said, Jesus, don't you remember the last time that you went to Jerusalem they tried to kill you there? Why in the world would you go to Jerusalem? Uh, Jesus' disciple Thomas, this is in John chapter 11, and we don't know if Thomas was being sarcastic or not, but Thomas's reaction was, yeah, let's go along and die too. When Jesus went to Jerusalem, it wasn't that he was being stupid or naive. He knew the danger that was in front of him. He knew there were those who wanted to kill him. So why in the world would Jesus go to Jerusalem and enter there on a Palm Sunday? The answer is because it wasn't about about him. It was about us, that Jesus had this kind of selfless love where he was willing to give himself for us. And so, on a Palm Sunday like today, one of the readings from the Bible that very often is read is from Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 as much as any other passage in the Bible, emphasizes the humility and the selfless love of Jesus that he would give himself up for for us. And so today, I want to break it into two sections. The first part, starting at verse 5, talks about Jesus' love for us. And then let me go back, verses 1 through 4, Paul applies that then to us in our lives. Here's what Paul writes about Jesus. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Today is a day to marvel at the selfless love of Jesus Christ. The way Paul describes it here in Philippians, here is Jesus who in very nature is God, and yet he didn't view that as something he had to grasp and hold onto for himself as if he couldn't ever set that aside for us. No, Jesus took his divinity of God. He didn't stop being God, but he decided to humble himself the way this passage is, is he made himself, he made himself nothing. The God who is the Lord, who rules all things, took on the very nature of a servant. He was made in our human likeness. Thinking back to Christmas, right? That Jesus was born as our Savior. He took on our humanity for us. He was selflessly willing to humble himself in that way. But it didn't stop there. Not only did Jesus take on our humanity He humbled himself even to death. And of all the deaths to die in the history of the world, he chose in his plan one that is the very worst. He even humbled himself to crucifixion on a cross. Why? Because he loves you. Because he loves me. Because God looked at this world that needed salvation and he said, I'm going to come and give myself for them. And what did Jesus accomplish? He did take away our sins. And he gives us life and heaven. We don't have to be afraid to die because we've got eternal life in him. And beyond that too, the rest of this passage talks about now how he is exalted beyond every name, beyond everything else. Every knee will bow in heaven and on earth to him. So again, today is a day to marvel at the selfless love of Jesus for us. But it's also a day to think about our own love for others as well. That first verse, verse 5, says your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. 
In a way that's a pivot verse, it transitions between what came before and what came after. What comes after that verse is looking again at Jesus who would go to a cross and die for us. Before, Paul talks about what our selfless love looks like toward others. And I think this is a good thing for us to think of today because what is it that's going to get us through any kind of crisis or the coronavirus crisis that we're facing right now? Uh, Yeah, we need good hospitals. Yes, we're going to need money to to get us through. But if there's one thing I could put my finger on is this is what's going to help us as our families and society and as our world get through this. It's if we selflessly serve one another. If life is not about our own prideful needs first, but about serving other people, it's going to mean that there are things that you might have wanted to do, or I might have wanted to do, things we might have wanted to buy, where that just has to be put on hold for the sake of serving other people. And why in the world would you and I be selfless in our love for those around us? I think even if you look at the secular world, things that are written in blog posts everywhere, you'll find some reasons why people are saying, let's be selfless. But for us as Christians, it comes back to the selfless love of Jesus Christ. So let me read how Paul starts out the chapter, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. He wrote this. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And then, here's where we picked up before, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, who gave himself for us. So when Paul thinks through why is it that we as Christians love and serve those around us, Paul has a list of four ifs. He says, if you have encouragement from being united with Christ, and is that true for you? Do you find encouragement in the relationship you have through faith with your Savior? If the answer is yes, Paul says, if you have any encouragement from his love, Does his love encourage your heart? Well, yes, it does. Do you have any fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Is there any tenderness or compassion that God has worked in you? Then Paul says, make my joy complete by having the same love, the same spirit, the same purpose, the same mind. Paul says, do nothing out of selfish ambition. Do nothing out of vain conceit for yourself. Consider others better than yourself. Look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Why? Paul says, let me tell you about the attitude of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, made himself nothing, took on our humanity, who humbled himself to death, even death on a cross. And so, in your own life, Are there ways that you'll have to selflessly put yourself aside and serve others in these coming days and weeks? Yeah, there are. And I don't know what that means for you. I'm trying to figure out what that means for me in my own family as a pastor in this world. But are there times when what you wanted to do or what you planned to buy, you have to put that aside Yeah, yeah, and I hope that it's not with a bitterness or complaining, but with a heart that honestly wants to serve others. That what your family needs, you will be that for them. What your friends, the people around you in this world need, you will will be that. It's going to take a selflessness on the part of all of us to keep the Christian church going through a difficult time. And you look out in this world, we don't need to be Take, take, take risks as Christians that are foolish, but are there times when we as Christians are going to have to take on risk to serve those who are sick around us? Yeah, there are going to be times like that too. And what's the reason for that? It's because we have experienced the selfless love of Jesus Christ. 
that he is God, made himself nothing, took on our humanity, and humbled himself even to death on a cross. Is there glory coming? Yes. But that comes next. First, the selfless service. First, the humbling ourselves. Then, just as Jesus was glorified, God promises we have glory coming forever in heaven too. But today, it's about the service part. And it's about Jesus, our Savior, who did go to Jerusalem, even though everybody else warned him about it, even though he knew the danger and what was going to happen there. It's about a Savior Jesus who died on the cross for us to forgive all our sins. Savior Jesus who willingly sacrificed himself for us. And Paul says in that verse 5 in the middle, your attitude and mine, uh, let's have that be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue our worship by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, you might hear a, a resemblance there. Are a lot of people who say Philippians chapter 2 sounds a lot like what was written later in the Apostles' Creed. Let's confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now is the time in our worship when we would be bringing the Lord our offerings here in person. But since we can't do that in person, let's still do that together at a distance. Many of our members have been giving online. The money given through PushPay has gone up as a percentage over these last few weeks. Some of you have been mailing it into the office. We have a lockbox if someone would like to drive by and drop it off in person. That's being checked every day. So no matter which way you choose, let's find ways to keep the work of the Christian church going through these coming weeks and months. Let's continue worship today now with a prayer. Lord Jesus, our Savior, today we praise and thank you for how you loved us. How even though you had all the riches of heaven, you set those aside to become poor for us. Even though you had all the glory of God, you humbled yourself and took on our humanity, even all the way to death on a cross, because you love us. And I pray today that your selfless love for us would now fill our hearts for each other. You know the needs around us, and I pray that you'd open our eyes to see them too, within our families, in our church, in our community, and in our world. And give us the same selfless love inside of ourselves that's willing to put ourselves aside, to humble ourselves as we serve each other united in our trust in you. I pray also today, Lord, that you'd be with our families here at St. Paul and Lake Mills. I pray especially for the family of Donna Stephan, whom you called to glory on March 24th, and the family of Fred Powellite, whom you took to heaven this last Wednesday, April 1st. In you, we have the hope of eternal life and heaven, and I pray today that you'd fill, that, fill those families with that hope in you. Comfort them with your love and assure them of all your promises in Christ. We pray also for the family of Colton Osmankowski, who was baptized here at St. Paul last Monday. Please be with him throughout his life. Help him to grow up in his faith in you. And now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. For all these things, Lord, and for everything else you know we need, we pray in the name of our Savior Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go now today with the blessing of your God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. The closing hymn today is Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. One more hymn about Jesus coming to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday as our Savior. Thank you for joining us here for worship at St. Paul today. May God be with you and your family and keep you healthy and safe. The one announcement I have this morning is this is Holy Week, and this is a week to celebrate the greatest things that God has done for us. So tune back in this Thursday for Maundy Thursday. The services on Thursday are at 3.30 and 6.30. This Friday is Good Friday, the day to to celebrate and remember that Jesus took all our sins away when he died for us. The services on Friday are at 10 in the morning, 1.30 in the afternoon, and 6.30 in the evening. And then, Easter Sunday, next Sunday, we have our two regular Sunday services will be the celebration of Easter at 8 o'clock and 10.30. So may God go with you and may he bless your week.